Now as I finish up this bottle stopper and put some finishing touches on with the skew chisel, I've decided to make a long version and a short version of this video. You're watching the short version, so I didn't want to cut down the long version too much. Uh, I think it's all very important, but practicing can be a tedious procedure, and I didn't want this video to become tedious, so you can watch this short version if you like. Now the last few days I've been doing a little casting, so I'm turning some pens and bottle stoppers. And one of the things I really like to do with the bottle stopper especially, is use a skew chisel on it to make those final finishing cuts. That allows you to start sanding at a much finer grit. Now, today's topic is going to be practicing with the skew chisel. I get a lot of comments about, oh, you're really good with the skew chisel. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm still learning and I'm still practicing. And practicing is what we're going to talk about in this video. All right, I thought I would let you see what this bottle stopper looks like with just a little bit of moisture on it. Now, this is straight off my skew chisel. And I do need to do some sanding on that. I got a lot of that debris on there. But anyway, that's uh, not too bad right off the skew chisel. So I'll do a little bit of sanding and finish this. Now, let's go take a look at the skew chisel and do a little practicing with that. Now I think practicing with any tool is a matter of repetition. Do it over and over and over again. And what I'm going to show you first is a peeling cut. I have a piece of Russian olive, Russian olive log. It should be fairly wet. Right now there's a lot of snow in the ground so it's probably a little bit frozen as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off the bark. I've got a fairly large skew chisel here. You may only have one skew chisel. I've got several for different operations. So you just need to adjust this uh, video. If you're going to practice, just adjust uh, according to the tool you have. So I'm going to put my face shield on, turn the lathe on, and just do a peeling cut. Now a peeling cut is a simple operation. I've got the skew chisel flat on the tool rest and I've got the cutting edge pretty much perpendicular to the piece of wood I'm cutting. Then push the tool into the wood and it'll peel off the top layer. It's not a very clean cut but it's a very efficient cutting operation. I'm about past the bark here so uh, I'm going to put a tenon on this end and reverse this into a chuck and just make it a little bit more secure. And I'm also going to just clean up the rest of this so I'm not uh, being bombarded with debris. Now I'm going to make one more point while I'm here in this position. Tool rest height is really important when you're using any tool. Ordinarily, I might have this tool rest down here, more towards center line. If I'm using a skew chisel, the handle in this position is going to be really, really low, and it's going to be uncomfortable. So, I usually have my tool rest a little bit higher, so my tool handle is more horizontal, a little bit more. Let me do just a little bit more peeling on this and get rid of this bark. I'm going to continue in this position and do a couple more cuts just to show you a little bit more what the skew chisel can do. Now I'm going to make the same cut in a different camera angle here in just a second. So this is really a peeling orientation and it levels off the wood very nicely, but I've got a lot of that cutting edge contacting the wood, so I don't leave a very good finish. So, I, so what I want to do is I'm going to lift my, my tool like this and angle it, and uh, that's going to be more of a sheer cut.
All right, now I'm going to show you the same cut at a little bit different angle. So if I have my tool in this orientation, it's peeling. And evidence of that peeling cut are the shavings you get off that. They're very wide and the surface is not very good. So let's turn this peeling cut into a into more of a sheer cut. So I'm taking my tool and I'm angling it up. I've got that long point up in the air. I got the heel leading, but I'm going to be cutting with the lower third. And what I want to show you are the shavings coming off the tool in that area. Okay, now I have my camera zoomed in to show you the dust on that tool. And that's a, that's a pretty good shot of where you should be cutting. Here is the problem. That's a good position to be in when you're when you're cutting in this uh, orientation. If I get my long point here, I can get a dig in. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go rather slow on this. This is a pretty good orientation, but if I get my long point in there too much, I get a catch. Okay. So there's a pretty good shot of that little catch I got. It wasn't too bad, but you can see what happens when you get that long point into the wood. You're going to get a catch. And the same thing kind of applies to the heel right here. I may not get a catch with that, but the surface is not going to be very good. It really isn't a very good uh, uh, approach for cutting with the skew chisel. Let's do that one more time. And again, we need to practice, so we're going to repeat this over and over and over again. I'm going to clean up this surface first. So if you're practicing and you have that log up here, this nice little piece of wet wood, you're going to do this over and over and over again. Now, might get in trouble, but anyway, you see how I'm starting that? And I can get away with it, but a better cut, a better approach, is going off the end from that position. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit longer tool rest on here and cover my next topic. Now most of what I learned about turning in the old days was from Richard Raffin, his old VCR tapes and books. And what he had in the early 80s is still relevant today. So if you're a new wood turner, don't overlook Richard Raffin and the things he did. He's also got a good DVD out on the skew chisel and getting a catch with it. Now I'm going to show you the long point leading, and that's kind of terminology from Richard Raffin. The long point leading. The toe of the skew chisel is down and the heel is, is pointed up. Now, you can cut with the long point into the wood. Let's just go ahead and do that. Now 
Now that is a, a fairly clean surface. It's really nice. It's really a good surface. Now we can take that one step further and not use the long point leading, but use rather this edge right here and you'll get a cleaner cut. You know, one thing I would point out to you is where the dust is on my tool and the very high point of that dust right here is where I was cutting. Why is this orientation better than this orientation? With the long point down, and I'm going to move my tool just a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. <coughs> My cutting edge is almost vertical. It's almost straight up and down when I'm in this orientation. And I'm getting a really, really good shearing cut from that. Okay, now what I'm using now is a Henry Taylor skew chisel. And I'm going to do a chamfer cut. And I've already got that started. I was practicing a little bit off camera to get this going. You can hear my grinder ramping down. Let me just do a little bit of turning on this. All right, now let me just run through this before I turn my lathe on again. I'm going to have the long point down and leading this cut. The toe of the, of the tool is leading. I want to have this area right here at the bottom, that's kind of the heel of the, of the skew chisel. I want that levering off the area where I'm cutting. Okay, so I've got, the, I've got the point in there, and I've got this area way down at the bottom contacting the wood. Okay, that's the proper orientation. The cutting edge up here is not. I'm cutting with the point. If I get in this position right here where I'm cutting with the edge, I'm going to get a catch, and it's going to run back. Let's see if I can do this properly. All right, now I'm gonna leave a little bit of that sound in there. And what, what you're hearing, I believe, is that grain, that soft, hard grain. It's just kind of vibrating as I go down through there. This cut, this surface is really, really good. However, being Russian olive, I can, I can feel the grain kind of undulating between the hard and the soft grain. So anyway, so that was uh, cut properly. I didn't get a catch. I'm going to turn my speed down on my lathe, and now I'm going to try to get a catch. I'll, I'll start out cutting properly. <laughs> There's a catch. Let's, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at that. That was not intentional. I was gonna gonna do a catch, but I had the 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 point in there too much, and I didn't have a good grip on my tool, and it ran back. Anyway, let me clean this up. Okay, let's try that again. Geez, I don't like to do that, but that was a good example. The first part of this cut was, okay Coco, the, the first part of this cut right here was done properly. And I just leaned my tool over till the edge was contacting and I got that, that cut. That's what you don't want to do. Well, it is midway through this video on practicing with the skew chisel. I took yesterday off and I'm back to finish up my video. Now, 
I'm not going to make a real comprehensive video on cutting with the skew chisel, but rather some hints on practicing. And that's all this is going to be. And uh, maybe I can give you some ideas that will help you improve your work with the skew chisel. Okay, now I've got my surface all cleaned up and I'm going to make that chamfer cut again. And I'm going to show you what I do when I teach or when I practice doing any kind of a cut, whether it's with a skew chisel or any other tool. Now let's say this pencil line defines the outer limits of my chamfer. I want it to start here and to come way down here on this spindle. Now here's a really important point. I can't start right here. I mean that's taken off way way too much wood so I've got to start right here on the edge and work my way back. Let's do that real quick. Now as I begin this uh, chamfer cut I'm just starting on the very end of the piece of wood and I'm just taking light passes and once you get into the rhythm it's uh, fairly easy. Now I've got the video stalled right here and this is a good shot of the cutting edge away from the wood and you want that or else you're going to get a catch. Okay so there's my chamfer all the way back to my pencil line. You can kind of see what I'm talking about here. You can't start here you got to start out there at the edge. Now as far as practicing this is what I do. Make a chamfer and I'm doing this on the right side, your left. So I make a chamfer and I take it away and I'm going to make another one. Now here's the most important thing I can say. Don't go from right to left. Do a bunch of cuts on the right side and then go to the left side and make a bunch of cuts on the left side. If I go from the right and then come back over here to the left side and right and left, I want this muscle memory to be automatic and I need to make a bunch of cuts from the right side. Let's just do that again. All right, I think you get the point. Now the next operation is going to be a V-cut. And I'll explain that as we go along. A V-cut is simply two chamfer cuts back to back. Okay, now what I just did is I made a V-cut. And a V-cut is simply a chamfer from the right side and from the left side. And again, we can practice this to be most efficient by cutting a bunch of chamfer cuts on the right side and then going to the left side. All right, so there I've made a V-cut. It's a little bit deeper and bigger. One of the most difficult aspects of making this cut is just starting this cut right here. It's very difficult. You have to have a, a pretty firm grip on your tool, and sometimes I take my, my forefinger and put it underneath and my thumb on top and just squeeze that tool so it's not going to move around. Let me see if I can do this. Now as you see me start the left side of this V-cut, I'm having a little bit difficulty starting my tool and I'm taking off too much wood. I guess I just need a little bit more practice. Now as I end this cut in the valley of that V, you'll see my tool stop. I've got the video stopped and it's important that your tool end up in more of a vertical position or else you may get a catch. If I were to do a bead, I would swing my tool handle around that chamfer. Let's just do that. Now as I progress 
and make another cut with my skew chisel. Here I'm forming the right side of a bead. I'm going to cut this a little bit short. I think by now you got the idea. If you can master the cut, you just do it over and over and over again and you'll get better. So what I've done here is I've made half of a bead. I've got the heel of the tool leading this cut. And as I make the cut and advance my tool forward a little bit, I'm also swinging my tool. Let's do that one more time. Now again, I would make this cut over and over again on the right side and then come to the left side. Let's go to the left side and do it. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to cover every possible cut with a skew chisel in this video. It's all about repetition. I'm going to go to a little bit smaller tool rest and I'm going to cut a cove right in this area. And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to practice cutting it from the right side going to the low point and the left side going to the low point in the center of the cove. Now there's a very important lesson in this. You can see this this crazy torn and splintered grain in the center of my cove is because I'm going to the valley and I'm butting up against that end grain. So let me do it properly, going from the right to the left. I get rid of all this garbage in the center. Now making a cove cut with a skew chisel isn't all that easy. It's rather difficult and I probably wouldn't do that in real life. I'd probably use a spindle gouge. It'd be much easier. But if you can do that with a skew chisel, you'll be a much better spindle turner. Anyway, I hope that gives you some ideas on how to practice. You know, it's just simply a matter of putting up a cheap piece of wood, a little limb of some sort, taken off your neighbor's tree in the middle of the night. Anyway, I hope this helps. This is Sam in Wyoming, and we're going right into 2018. I'm not sure when I'll get this video up. It may be my first video in 2018. So I'll talk to you later.